Welcome to Out of the Box from Hudson County Community College. In these podcasts, we bring you timely discussions about education, people, programs, events, issues, and solutions that affect the education and enrichment of the people of Hudson County. I'm Chris Reber, president of Hudson County Community College and your podcast host. Today, we're delighted to have an opportunity to discuss a program that we're very proud of, uh, our Trailblazing Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Student Passport Program, sometimes called DEISPP. Uh, here with me today are two of my valued colleagues, both of whom played a role in developing and offering uh, the program, and they are our Assistant Dean of Student Life and Leadership, Veronica Gerasimo. Thank you for being here, Veronica. Thank you for having me. And the Associate Director of our North Hudson campus and also an HCCC instructor, Amala Ogburn. Thanks for joining us, Amala. Thank you for having me, Dr. Ruba. And we're very pleased to welcome back a Hudson County Community College alumnus, Gerardo Leal, who was uh, one of our first students to complete the first offering of this diversity, equity, and inclusion student passport program. Gerardo, welcome back home. Gracias. Thank you for having me. And we're really looking forward to talking about your experience and your story. Uh, but I would like us to begin uh, by offering you an opportunity uh, to share with us a land acknowledgement. Thank you. This is something that I have been developing to use during practice, and it's just uh, a way to help clients and coworkers reconcile with their everyday routine and studying it in a positive note. This is a rainmaker. It's uh, made in Costa Rica to put uh, other cultures inclusive in the, into our own narrative. And it goes like this. I recognize my mother Earth. I will be careful when I walk on her. I recognize my father's son. I will receive his embrace with joy. I recognize my brother Win. Every day my imagination flies with him. I recognize my sister Water. She washes away my shame and guilt. And about everything, I recognize me as part of the universe. And everything is well today. Gerardo, thank you. That's beautiful. And what a, what a wonderful way of beginning a discussion about the college's commitment and shared values around diversity, equity, and inclusion. Thank you for sharing that. Gracias. Coming back to Veronica and Amala, Tell me a little about, tell our viewers, about the um, Hudson County Community College Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Student Passport Program. The DEI SPP was built out of, uh, after the summer of 2020, one that unfortunately we will never forget and impacted us in so many ways. Um, for many of us, we looked around to think about, you know, what could we do to help? How can we use our sphere of influence, our, our position in this world to make a difference? And ultimately, you know that you're able to do only but so much, but by teaching and leading and supporting others is where you have that, that ripple effect. Or like one of our other uh, co-facilitators, Diana Galvez, says the, the, net, the cell phone tower network where you see the lights light up everywhere. Um, so thinking about within the Office of Student Life and Leadership, we do a lot of leadership development opportunities and um, partnering up with our campus partners and seeing to build something for our students. Amala and our other colleague Natalia are very involved in supporting our staff and faculty and our community as a whole during this time with a lot of programming, community building, healing, um, and felt as perfect partners to, to bring into this. So we kind of reached out uh, between myself and Javi Hall, who was um, our North Hudson programming coordinator, uh, Amala and Diana and Natalia vasquez Bakken from the Office of DEI um, came together and and thought about how can we build something that helps to build equity leaders that introduce, introduces topics to our students that they may or may not be aware of, but does it in a way that provides a safe space of community building and healing. Fantastic. And just um, maybe we can speak just a little bit about our experience during the pandemic since you've mentioned that. And that really was the time when this and so many other programs and initiatives and convenings uh, got their start. Um, you both were leaders and trailblazers during this time, you know, like, like the rest of uh, the nation and, and the world. On a, uh, with virtually no notice, we had to shift everything we know and do mm -hmm. to remote. 
And, um, and as it turned out, it was for a much longer period of time than we expected. So all members of our campus community, students, faculty, staff, alumni, um, were no longer together physically. We were all uh, communicating through primarily WebEx, through um, Zoom. And yet something really interesting happened that I'll never forget that I think has been life-changing for so many. And you two, along with some other colleagues, were on the front lines of this. Um, mm -hmm. What wound up happening, I, I remember thinking, as president of the college, I really don't know how, if I'm capable of helping lead us mm -hmm. through this. And then all of a sudden, everybody rose to the occasion. People just selflessly uh, helped one another and um, provided opportunities to share care and concern uh, discussions. Certainly lots of professional development, both for those teaching online for the first time or virtually and those studying virtually for the first time. And, and then, of course, during this terrible health crisis, we also had the crisis of uh, social and racial injustice and all of the horrible examples of things happening around us. And, and so I'm remembering that we were meeting as a community virtually constantly. Yeah. I mean, there were, there were so many programs and discussions that were so well attended. Yeah. Uh, uh, and it got us all through this. And Amal, I, you are an organizer of ma many of these events. Can you speak a little about the kinds of things we did? I'll tell you one thing, and I thought about it this morning, and I haven't thought about it in a while, and excuse me if I get a little emotional. When, after George Floyd and Breonna Taylor were, were murdered, and we decided, myself and Nakia, which is a, um, one of our former co-workers, decided that we were going to go hand out PPE and snacks to protesters, and oh my God. Everybody rallied around us. And I mean, like, you, you mentioned being um, on the front lines. So many of our colleagues came out of their homes, left their families, Veronica brought her wife, on the front line in the height of a pandemic and helped us support protesters. And they marched and held up signs. And I mean, like, we were out there with, like, I had my son out there. We had our kids outside during the height of the pandemic. And, but it felt very necessary. The, the risk felt worth it. And so it's like, if we can go outside and put ourselves in danger in order to support our community and support something that's going on um, worldwide at this point, how can we do it internally with, with ourselves, but with our colleagues and how can we create these spaces? And um, one thing for me was that I needed a safe space. I couldn't find it. And so my mind told, my mindset was let's create it. Let's create it. How can we do this thing? Um, and luckily, like everybody was on board. And I want to give a um, just a quick shout out to your lady Rosario Hernandez because your lady, this this all started a lot of this work. Um, I won't. It started prior to Hudson, which was um, I'm sorry, prior to 2020, which was in 2017 when your lady was the director of multicultural programs at Rutgers University. Myself, uh, Nakia, and Joycelyn, who is also one of our colleagues, had a chance to go on a three-day retreat, social justice retreat, where we did a lot of the work that we are doing now. But it was like, it was really intense and it was all day for three days up in Catskills. But it was so impactful that um, as soon as the pandemic hit and social justice did start to hit, it, it only made sense to say, let's contact your lady. Your lady will be mm -hmm. able to help us and figure out how we can support our community. And your lady really showed up and, and, and showed out for us. And I don't know if we can ever really yeah. thank Zer enough for yeah. the work. There were, there were so many heroes, silent heroes. Yeah. I'm also thinking about just one of many sort of programs or themes during this period of our uh, interaction virtually, our Stories Untold series. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you um, just speak briefly to that, Veronica? Yeah, I really enjoy, I mean, I think we, we 
we grow by knowing other people's stories. Um, and, I, and I know that that was the, the kind of initiation and, and the goal out of it, to be able to take a moment to see these people that you work with, that you see in a certain light, a certain position, and really just humanize everybody. So we were able to hear so many stories um, uh, around the college, and I was able to come on with my mom as well and share our story, um, our kind of mental health, uh, a life of mental health um, uh, illnesses and being able to support each other and break through the stigma and really know that, you know, uh, ultimately we just need each other. And that's a big part of my inspiration and what I do is that knowing that there's a student who maybe is at their home life is not the best or the support is not quite there. And then that we can do here what we would hope for them to have at home because Hudson is home and we can provide that to them. Yeah. So it's, it's been an amazing opportunity. And for me, it was, it was uh, special to be able to, to break down a little bit and, and share who we are because it allowed for so many people. I had so many people reach out and say that they had similar experiences or similar home life, family life. Um, and just kind of being able to show like, it's okay to, to not be okay. It's okay to, to, you know, what we are here is, is one portion of who we, who we are in life. Absolutely. And, um, I think one of the really beautiful, special things about this Hudson County Community College family, and I think it really um, became palpable during this period of the pandemic, is people willing to share their vulnerabilities, people willing to be who they are, comfortable in their own skin, and willing to share, and willing to um, comfort one another, help one another, support one another. Mm -hmm. So um, much... Um, much good, many good things came out of this otherwise horrible um, time of what I call the twin pandemics, right? Yeah. Social and racial injustice and, um, and, and the, the health crisis. Um, we had already as a college community been focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion as one of our two overarching priorities along with student success, helping all students not just come through the front doors, but achieve their goals and dreams, which is going to be a good segue into uh, Gerardo. Um, but tell us just a little bit about this particular program, the uh, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Student Passport Program. How long is it? What does it involve? Mm -hmm. It's had a lot of iterations, and that's been the beautiful thing in this time to be able to, I mean, the program where we started is not at all the program that, or the program that had auto completed um, is not at all what it is now, in a little bit. But mm -hmm. at this point in time, it's an eight-week fully online program. Um, we uh, we bookend it with kind of an orientation introduction to get everybody aware of what to expect, to introduce everybody to each other, and then make sure to, to get them at the end to talk about what, you, what you've learned and how you can put it into action. Um, during the time, we focus on topics such as implicit bias, microaggressions, privilege, allyship, inclusive language, advocacy and action, um, and really building communities. So we do that through discussion boards, through uh, quizzes, through activities in, in a fully online program to be able to allow that flexibility um, um, for students. And what we're able to build in these discussion boards is really, um, I think, the, the the heart of what it is. And I'll share, uh, pass it over to Amal to share a little bit about that. Well, I just wanted to add um, to your point about flexibility is now that we've this semester we've been able to offer it to our AWPP students, to our incarcerated students. And um, it's really teaching us this a strong lesson in flexibility. Sometimes they're unable to have access to the computer. Sometimes they're unable to come go down to the law library where class will be held. And really trying to figure out how can we meet the needs of this population of students with this program in a way that serves them best and not the way that's easiest for us. And um, it's a work in progress, but it's actually, it's, it's, it's a lesson, it's a learning opportunity for us, and it's, it's been great so far. And thanks for mentioning that. Uh, one of our college's priorities also is serving incarcerated citizens and reentry citizens and court-involved yes. citizens. Mm -hmm. And because we know that the opportunity for second chances has everything to do with education and credentials. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is a wonderful addition to the offerings there. Let's come to Gerardo. Uh, Gerardo, your story is so inspirational. While we were all navigating the, the pandemic, you as a student were studying here largely remotely, right? Well, my personal story is just as important as anybody's personal mm -hmm. story. The difference is that now I got a chance to tell it. Yes. And that comes with gratitude, but also with the realization that 
Now education has given me the vocabulary to identify my experiences. Like I had no idea that when somebody was looking down on me or almost criticizing me for the way I dress or the way I look, that was a microaggression. Mm -hmm. I learned it in the program. I also understood that it was not about me. It, it was about the systems of oppression that had prevented me from getting to this opportunity. I love people having second chances, but some of us didn't have a first one. Right. Mm -hmm. And my identity now as a, as a scholar gives me that power to recognize my own trajectory and reclaim my own narrative, mm -hmm. which is, I don't know, maybe a nightmare for some white supremacists because they were always afraid of us and now they're going to deal with us, educated, mm -hmm. hungry. is not a competition that they want. And I owe a lot of this to Hudson County Community College. Well, uh, we're, we are so proud of you. So you, uh, let me just share what I know about your journey, uh, part of what I know. You uh, started here in 2019, uh, seeking an associate degree in psychology. Along came the, pan came the pandemic. You had to uh, pursue your studies, much of the time virtually, like, like all of our other students. Uh, and, and you started, like most of our students, in some foundational coursework, which usually adds time to uh, the journey of completing a degree. And in spite of all those challenges, you graduated from Hudson County Community College in 2021 with your associate degree in psychology. That's, you graduated in two years in spite of all of those challenges, which meant you had to go to school uh, beyond just the normal credit load and probably summers, and um, you had to really be going full time while managing your life. What was that like? And what do you attribute your ability to navigate all of those challenges and finish on time uh, in just two years? Well, thank you. Now that you just made a recollection of all of that, it's still trigger like. I am not exactly sure, sure how. I know why. I have waited so long for this dream to happen that now that it was a reality, not even the pandemic will yeah. take it from me because it was a privilege. When people were uh, out there working, protesting, I had classes and I understood that as much as I believe in the movement, if I was not doing my work, or my homework, I was, in, a, in my personal view, betraying the movement because there were people out there getting killed. I had the pleasure of meeting Tamika Palmer, Breonna's Taylor mother, yeah. through a Zoom meeting in the community college. And every time I had that opportunity, it did not put pressure on me. It just demonstrated that I had not only family and friends rooting in support of me, but now I have a whole community in college, and I'm a man of my word. I said, no, I need to get things done because I'm not alone in this. Yeah. And when you realize that you had never been alone, the sky is the limit. Absolutely. So you then went, graduated here in 21, and you went on to finish your Bachelor of Social Work degree at Rutgers in just two years. You finished that this past May. And you are now well on your way to completing your Master of Social Work at Rutgers and expect to graduate next year. Uh, yes, let me take a moment because graduating in May of 2023, again, it was another milestone. But then I did realize that the profession I had chosen, because by now I have embraced social work. Uh, the system, again, has conditioned that to get certain positions where you can make the most change, a bachelor is not mm -hmm. enough. A bachelor is no longer enough, which is very sad because some of us have to stop there. Yeah. Fortunately for me, I had my wife supported me, and I did apply to various scholarships, and I was granted many of them mm -hmm. to, to support my dream. Therefore, Finish. I, I am enrolled in the advanced program, mm -hmm. which 
if things continue as they're going, I will be able to finish in May 2024. In the process, I did finish the bachelor's in May, six, May 16, and I'm re-enrolled in classes in May 30. So I do dream of a vacation, but <laughs> not yet. So <laughs> by chance, are you taking any of your MSW courses here at Hudson? Because we offer them here. Yes, I was aware of it, but is in that program is part uh, when you take classes on the weekends. Got it. Yes, and I am part of the advanced standing program, Got it. which is a hybrid. You can be in person or in line. Uh, is the most intense, and I think has some prepared me for that. So we are um, uh, delighted to partner with Rutgers to offer their MSW program here. But you're right, we do that on weekends mm -hmm. for people that uh, for whom that model works. But your model's working really well. <laughs> Gerardo, uh, what do you hope to do in your career? You're going to have the credential that will allow you to, um, to do a number of things. What do you hope to do and how has both your Hudson experience and in particular uh, your, your being a pioneer in our uh, diversity, equity, inclusion student passport program, how has that informed what you are hoping to do? going forward? Well, the passport program, what it did for me, it was educating me in, in my own reality and accepting the reality of others. By acknowledging somebody's uh, pronouns, you give them the power of respect and you might get it back. Mm -hmm. There are people that think that they have a pre that pronouns are a preference. It's not a preference. It's who they are. A preference is when you choose to have a mango or a papaya. Yeah. That's a preference. A identifying your own identity is powerful. And once you do that, you start respecting others for who they are. Right. You don't have to agree with who they are, but respecting them is a basic human right. And the passport program did that for me, and I hope he's doing it for so many other students. And what do you hope to do as a social worker? Carry on those principles of not fixing people mm -hmm. because I never wanted to be fixed. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to be acknowledged. And sometimes give them spaces, create safe spaces like they did for me. Uh, exactly how I'm still working on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's why I'm getting educated to be able to provide somebody else with the opportunity that was given to me. I guess pay it forward. Thank you so much for sharing your truly inspirational story. So Gerardo was uh, one of the very first students to finish the program. Since then, uh, how many other students have uh, taken and, and finished the program? And what do you think uh, the program has meant to our, our students uh, throughout the college? Talk a little bit on statistics and then uh, pass it to Amala. Um, so we've been able to have about 180 students Fantastic. complete the program over the past three years or so. Um, and also with the kind of the growth of the program, being able to test out different modes and see what works best. And we've come to the point of understanding that the online program works the best. So we uh, about 180 students have about a 50% completion uh, mm -hmm. rate, which is fantastic. About mm -hmm. nationwide, 40% is usually what you'll see for completion rates of, of, of similar certificates. And and we've actually had one student complete it twice. And we have multiple students wow. who come back semester to semester. They're like, I know we, it's a similar topics, but every semester is different. Um, right. We have a different cohort of students, um, different experiences, even just points in, in life. You know, the, the cohort that we saw in spring of 21 and what was needed and what was shared is, is different from the cohort now. Right. And I'll pass to Amal to share a little bit about our cohorts. Yeah, and each cohort has a different personality. And I remember when I first became a student here and then a peer leader, one of the former peer leaders who was also a student life employee mentioned that each classroom has a different personality. And so the way you address it, approach the classroom would be different. And we saw that in our different cohorts of DEI SPP. And so you have some cohorts that are really quiet when we would have our remote um, meetings. But in the discussion posts, people would connect over things that you would never think about. And one example is that we had like, I think it was about three students who connected over having um, experienced traumatic brain injuries, um, which 
you know, it sounds like a little bit of a trauma bomb, but it wasn't. There were people who were able to find their tribes within the discussion board, um, which is one of the things that made the discussion post so successful versus being in a remote um, setting where everyone, no one wants to talk over each other. Mm -hmm. um, each cohort has taught us something or another. Um, it's pointed out where our blind spots are. For example, we only teach the course right now in English and we know we need to offer it in other languages. Absolutely. We need to have the information in other languages. Um, and so it also gives us the opportunity to grow as we continue to teach our students. We've had students change career paths after taking the, the DEI SPP program. And something that I think is most significant about the program is that the program starts with introspection. Mm -hmm. And so some of our students come in and the first thing they want to know is how can I teach my grandparents or my parents mm -hmm. to not be this thing? And um, similar to what Gerardo said, it's not about teaching your family. It's about you looking within yourself mm -hmm to see what your blind spots are and how you can work on your blind spots. And the people around you will shift, right? It's kind of like, um, I would say it's like if a, there's a squirrel in the forest and the squirrel eats an acorn, as they travel through the flor forest, they'll, they'll dro have droppings and then seeds will grow. And it's the same thing. When you learn something and you start to change and you start to grow, the people around you will start to grow. And we see it with so many of our um, DEI Passport students. Yeah. Some of them go on to participate in our eCornell um, right. Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Program, which we um, have reserved for employees because it is work-based, a work-based program. But um, students, they want more. They want to keep going. And so now the challenge is trying to figure out what's the next step to DEISPP? How can we give the students more? Yeah. Yeah. One thing we like to offer is our similar next steps is the ability to um, become part of the Presence Advisory Council on Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, the PAC Day Student Action Group, which is a branch of PAC Day that is student, you know, action focused and, and led. Uh, we look for opportunities to include students in the program as well as student navigators. So uh, we have a terminology of like traveler and navigator within the password program. So we've brought on students to serve in the facilitator role um, as a student navigator, and then also looking for opportunities for students to work either in the Office of Student Life and Leadership to do cultural and diversity programming or in the Office of DEI. So we look for those students who are looking for more and always looking for more and more, but to connect them to those opportunities to become equity leaders within the college. Absolutely. And, and Amala, your point is so well taken. You know, I've thought often about what an honor it is to be working in a profession that provides uh, the opportunity for such wonderful, transformational, positive impacts and changes on people. But it's not just the impact on our current were alum, students or alumni, it's thinking about the impact they then make on their children, in their communities, with their coworkers. Uh, it's like throwing a, a pebble in a pond and seeing all those ripple effects. Yeah. I want to just also salute both of you. Amala, you're working on your second master's degree. I am, in, in clinical mental health. And Veronica, you're working on your doctoral degree in, in higher college education. Community college education. Mm -hmm. We're very proud of both of you. Uh, we have a tradition in these podcasts, uh, as we conclude, I always ask my guests, if you could describe your Hudson County Community College experience in one word, what would that word be? Gerardo, what would your word be? In one word, gratitude. Gratitude. Mm -hmm. Veronica? Special. Special. Evolving. Evolving. My word's always inspirational. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, and thank you all for joining us for this session of Out of the Box. We hope you will visit our website, hccc.edu, and share this podcast with your friends and family. And please stay safe and well. Thank you. <laughs>